1 Timothy 4. I'm talking about patterns. I'm talking about patterns. God gives us patterns or examples of how we are to live our lives. And 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 gives us such a pattern. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 it says, Paul writes, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We're going to come back to that later. It's a strong call for us to be an example, for a pattern for others to follow. Webster's Dictionary calls a pattern a form or a model for imitating. It's a blueprint. We look back in the Word of God and we see various patterns, various blueprints, various instructions. For example, we see Moses. The Lord gave Moses a pattern to build the tabernacle of how it was to be built. We read that in Hebrews 8 verse 5. The Lord told Moses, See that thou make all things according to the pattern that I showed thee in the mount. God gave a pattern about the tabernacle, about this tent of meeting, about the instruments, the equipment, about how the people would worship. And there was significance to this tabernacle, to the truths of it, the meaning behind all the items, all the things that made up the tabernacle. <coughs> Likewise, in 1 Chronicles 28, verse 11 to 19, we read how David gave to Solomon the pattern that the Lord had given to David about the temple, of its construction, of its various furnishings, all of which, again, had a very important spiritual meaning. Now that's something we might explore in a message later one day about all the various meanings behind all the various items of the tabernacle, of the temple. It was important that the pattern was followed. In Noah's time too, in Genesis 6 verse 22, it says that Noah was instructed on the construction of the ark, of the pattern that the Lord gave and it says in Genesis 6 verse 22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He followed the pattern, he followed the instruction, the directions of God about how the ark was to be made. And the ark again was a very special significance because the ark represented Christ. In the time of judgment of the world, it was the safe place, it was the shelter, it was the safety. And likewise too, Christ is our ark. He is the one we can flee to, to have safety from judgment, from wrath. His saving work is pictured in the ark. So again, a pattern, a very critical and important. And just so, there's patterns for us that are human beings. There's patterns for us in the lives of people, men and women, through the pages of scripture. There's patterns that we can follow. And the pattern or model that we adopt to follow for our life is vital, it's essential, it's critical that we follow the right model. We can follow a right model or a wrong model. We need to follow the pattern or the model that God has given for us, men and women who act as patterns for our lives of how to live. For example, James spoke in James 5 verse 10. He admonishes the believers. He says, Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. An example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. So when we face such things, brothers and sisters, who should we look to for an example of how to live? The prophets of old, the ancients of old. The ones in the scriptures that we can see the accounts of their lives and how they stood fast. Paul, the apostle, himself is a pattern. We know Paul is especially important to the church of God. A worthy example for us to follow. We see of his life in 1 Timothy 1, 
verse 15. And I know it's reflecting just on Wednesday night as we're studying uh, the letters of Paul. How it stands out how Paul is such a dramatic example of what God can do with a human being. Here's a man who's totally contrary to the church of God, threatening and hurting the believers, destroying the church of his day, standing steadfast against it, and then God gets his attention. He's transformed, he's converted dramatically. And what a change, what a dramatic encounter for Paul. And that God should choose Paul, of all people, to be such an important figure for us as the church of God today. And we read of Paul in 1 Timothy 1, uh, verse 15, through it says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. The chief of sinners was the one our Lord chose to bring forth his gospel, a pattern for them who should hereafter believe. Paul. And Paul says likewise in Philippians 3, verse 17, he says that we are to follow him and those who walk like him. Elsewhere it says, be followers of me as I follow Christ. Be imitators of me. In Philippians 3, 17 it says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. An example for the believers. Paul was an example. He says, follow me. He says, follow those who walk like me. We can learn much from Paul, can't we? What a life he lived. What a testimony. His life was filled with many challenges and tests, much suffering and affliction. And God chose him of all people in all of his hate of Christ and, and the Christ followers to be that strong testimony of what God can do in the life of a human being. What a testimony, what an example his life can be. How do we measure up to this pattern, the pattern of Paul? A template, if you like. What of Christ? He's the ultimate model, if you like, the, the template. If you could think of a perfect template. Now this is a very poor substitute, but a template, as it were. I know when I was at school, we used to, in metal work, you had a template. Remember, remember that, boys and girls, <laughs> when you were back in school? And, and some of you ladies, you might have uh, played around with some patterns to, to make dresses. You know, in the old-fashioned days, before we used to get everything from China, we used to cut out things, didn't we? You'd lay something on a piece of cloth, and you'd get those scissors out, and you start cutting away around the pattern so you could make that dress, ladies, or... or some of you men might like to make dresses too. But yeah, you might have made something in metalwork or woodwork. You had a, pa a pattern. You had a template that you laid on something and you used the bandsaw or whatever it was to make that production. Likewise, Christ is, if you like, that template. That template, that pattern for us. And who is our Lord? What is He? The ultimate servant, the ultimate model. We see Him. In John 13, washing the disciples' feet, washing even the feet of Judas, his betrayer. And what does he say in John 13? For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. You should do as I have done. He was the ultimate servant. We can learn from Christ our Lord as the ultimate living example and pattern of how we are to walk and to please God. Many of these men and women through history, we hear of Esther, for example, as a, as a lady, that we can learn the character of the person, of the humility, of the integrity of these men and women. 1 Peter 2, Peter writes, For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye are buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently, but if ye, when ye do well and suffer for it, 
you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. What kind of example? It goes on, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. And there wasn't a lack of truth in his mouth. Whatever his words were, were true. There was no lies there. There was no guile there. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. What of you, brother, when you're reviled? When someone speaks ill of you, when someone says something against you, do you fight fire with fire? We can make that mistake, can't we? Instead, let's follow the template. Follow the template, the pattern of Christ, so that we can come to that fullness of the stature, of the measure of Christ. He should be our pattern. We're constantly exhorted through the Word to follow Christ, to follow His example, to be a follower of the Lord, of the godly way. It goes against the grain sometimes, doesn't it? Let's be honest. It goes against the grain to be like Christ. It goes against the human inclination, against the flesh, against that real me, as it were, sometimes that, that we've got to die daily to self and keep that fire against self, against pride, against seeking after our own way. It's in all of us. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, through it says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Paul says, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, You're followers of us and of the Lord. You're examples to others. You're examples. How? Having received the word in affliction, in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Could it be that when the refiner's fire of much affliction comes, it's the Lord giving us more of the Holy Spirit's comfort and blessing? Could it be when you're going through that fire that God is doing a work by His Spirit within your life, making you more like Christ? One of the best examples uh, we can find is in Titus 2, verses 6 to 8. You might like to turn there. One of the best things we can do is to be an example. Titus 2, verses 6 to 8. Paul's addressing young men. He says, Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. There's that word again. A pattern of good works. In doctrine... Showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Doctrine's important. Sound speech, that thou cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So there's doctrine, there's sound speech, there's how we believe, there's how we behave. It's hand in hand, it's the pattern, it's the pattern that we're exhorted to. Young men, be sober minded. Be a pattern of good works, in sincerity, in integrity, in uncorruptness, in that quality of your living, in that quality of your speaking, in that quality of your doctrine, of your teaching. We need to be faithful to the biblical pattern. That's what we earnestly, I pray, want to be on. Trust that is your heart's desire too, to be like Christ, to be more Christ-like, to be more like that biblical pattern that he wants us to have. Elders likewise are exhorted on the same line in 1 Peter 5, verse 3, neither being as lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Now that could apply, I think, to all of us older men in some ways. People are looking to us. People are looking to us for the example of our own life, the example of our attitude, the example of our nature, the example of how we conduct ourselves. And every Christian should aspire to aim for being that right model, for being more like the template, as it were, that is Christ, our Saviour. On the other hand, there is the wrong model. The wrong model, we see that in the example of the unfaithful people 
in the wilderness in 1 Corinthians 10 through 1 through 11. The unfaithful people in the wilderness wanderings, they're an example too. But an example not of right living, but of wrong living. We read that there in 1 Corinthians 10 from 1 through it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptised unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. He's talking of the wilderness wanderings of the promised people, of God's beloved people as they wandered through the wilderness times. That they were fed with manna, with quail. They were watered through the rock. And it was a picture of Christ there, the spiritual rock. But it goes on in verse 5, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. These things were our examples. They're examples, they're a pattern, he writes, to the extent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. You know, when they came down, when, when Moses came down from the mountain, they were rising up and playing. They had a big uh, rock band and everything, all the bells and whistles and the golden calf, and they were dancing and jiving and having a great time. But they were idolaters. Eating and drinking, rising up to play. And God was displeased with them. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. And fell in one day 23,000. Immorality is something we need to take note of that. And <coughs> seek to live according to God's will. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. And were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Murmuring. Evil speaking. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. They happen for examples and they're written for our admonition, for our warning, for our instruction upon whom the ends of the world are come. We can learn from the example of these in 1 Corinthians 10 how not to live, not to lust after evil things, not to commit sexual immorality, not to chase after idols, not to test God's patience, not to murmur. The account of their lives is a very loud example. It's a very strong example for you, for me. People are watching how you live, how you talk, how you conduct yourself. Don't be a stumbling block. You are a model. You are on display. On display to the younger ones about us, and you know, I've noticed that the older I get, there's more people younger than me around. I don't know if you ever noticed that. But there's more people younger than me, uh, it seems, more and more every day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, little ones, they're just, they're just multiplying. And uh, the, the greyer I get, the more I notice there's more and more people younger than me. And you know what? They're watching. They are watching you older people. So... You know, we've all got to wake up to that. We've all got to consider, am I being a model that's a good thing for them to be watching? And you know, but as fathers, it's a, it's a pretty tough call too. Those little ears are listening to what the dad says. They're watching what the dad does, or the mum. And we need to watch how we're living. Are we models that are right or wrong? And back to the text that we started with, 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. What kind of pattern are we displaying to the world? How do we respond to situations, to life in general? Are we living up to the pattern? If it could be that we could have a, a template, as it were, and we could get some, a pair of scissors and you know, start with that raw material that is our life and start, start to just do some of this, you know... Uh, I'm not meaning to be flippant about this, but if it could be that we could, we could do some of this sort of stuff to our lives, we could look at Christ more and more day by day, and we could go, go through, going through the pattern that is Christ. 
looking at Christ and who he is and what he's all about, we see that here in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Six dimensions, if you like. Timothy here, I'm told, although he's addressed as a youth, he was probably about 38 to 40 years old, someone reckoned. I don't know how they worked that out, but someone probably wiser than me worked that out. So some of you might think you're, not out, out, you're out of the youthful stage, but you may not be that far off, off still being a youth. <laughs> so there you go. You're not, you're not as old as you thought you were. So if, if Timothy was maybe only uh, about 40 years old, he was addressed by Paul. There's a pattern for you here, Timothy. A pattern, an example of what you should aspire to be, of how you should aspire to live your life. How do you measure up to that pattern that is Christ, the Christ-like nature that we should aspire to have? He sets out the basic parameters of the life to live. And he leaves it up, up to us to fill in the details. You know, I think sometimes when Moses was told about the tabernacle, there were certain measurements, there were certain items, but there was men of, of cunning art, there were certain craftsmen uh, that were called upon to make those things. They weren't given the detail of, of some of those items of furniture within the tabernacle. They were just given the basic instructions of the items that were required. It was left up to the human to fill in the detail. I think likewise with the temple as well. We fill in the detail. I think sometimes we get a picture of Christ and of what he is about of Christian living and it's up to each one of us to fill in the detail as it were. Living Christ in your life might be different how he lives out in another's life. But the ultimate model is Christ. It's Christ-likeness. How does our word measure up? We go through these six dimensions, if you like. How does our word measure up to the pattern, the word that we speak? Does it measure up? Do I speak with integrity? Can my words be counted on? When I say something, will my yes be yes and my no be no? Or some people think, did he really mean that? Is he really talking fair dinkum? Is he, is he really talking turkey to me? Is that really the, the, the honest truth that he's telling to me? Are you slow to speak? Or do just words fall out of your mouth before you engage the brain? I know I have that problem sometimes. Now Julie will say I'm into that. And, now can people trust your word? What you say is your speech coarse. Are the words that come out of your mouth that you wouldn't utter in the presence of, of some? And yet you will in the presence of others. Or when no one's watching. Coarse words falling out of your mouth. When you are reviled, do you revile again? Do you stick up for yourself and, you know, make a, a fuss when there's an argument? Or will you be, uh, I know I was encouraging a brother of late. You know, he was as a lamb before her shearers was done. He didn't defend himself. He didn't uh, launch a counter-attack. When he was attacked and, and reviled, did he, our Saviour? Shouldn't we be like that in our words? What about what's coming out of our mouth? Is it bitter waters or sweet? The Bible says it should be one or the other. Let's take account of our words. What about our conversation or our lifestyle? How we conduct ourselves? Your conduct, your behaviour. Is it conduct becoming of a Christian? Do our lives line up with the pattern? of Christ? Is your attitude sweet or is it so often selfish and vain? Are you above reproach before the world, before those outside of the Christian circle? Do you keep short accounts with God and with men when you offend someone or when they're offended with you? Do you seek to reconcile? Do you seek to sort it out or do you let it fester and, and get more smelly and putrid? and vile. Deal with it, brother. Deal with it, sister. Let your conversation measure up to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Your conversation, your giving, your loyalty, your kindness. It's all about your conduct, isn't it? Your conversation. Those basic parameters 
We've seen the word. We've seen conversation. What of your charity? Your charity, your love. Would you lay down your lives for the brethren? Would you lay down your life for another? Have you got love like Christ had? How deep is your love? How do you measure it? Your brotherly love. We're brothers and sisters. We might not all entirely see eye to eye. That's about the differences God allows. That's about that kind of individual difference that he gives to us as a church. Do you mend quarrels and broken relationships? Is there a bond of love, of charity? Fourthly, spirit. An example in spirit. How does your spirit measure up? Is there a meekness in your spirit? A gentleness? A, a, an easy to be entreatedness? A humility? Do you conduct yourself with that spirit that is forgiving? Or do you bear grudges and have you got big chips on your shoulder? You know, and you're walking around like this, it's, they're getting heavier and heavier. Is he, have you got that kind of spirit that just want to hang on to those little hurts? You know, you keep them in your pocket and you get them out every so often. Now look, oh, so-and-so hurt me and oh, 10 years ago so-and-so did this to me and 15 years ago someone borrowed some money and they never paid it back. And, <laughs> you know, we can be like that, can't we? We can have that kind of spirit that holds on to things. Or have you got a cheerful spirit? Have you got a glad heart? Do you act in accordance with the Holy Spirit when the pressure is applied? What happens when you get into hot water? There's uh, all, the, all the bad stuff come out. How, you, how do you display the spirit of your life? Is it in the works of the flesh? Is the spirit of Christ evident in your life? Friends, we can all consider, make that assessment. How do we measure up to the pattern? What about your faith? Christ is our example of faith. Powerful faith. Our Lord prayed. How much more should we? Faith. Pray. Christ is our example. And lastly, number six, purity. Be an example in purity. It speaks of separation. It speaks of separation, of purity of heart. The word speaks of a pure heart, speaks of a pure mind. Watch what you saturate that sponge that's in your head with. You know, sometimes we've got to almost, you know, unzip it and squeeze it out every so often. What's in that sponge that is filling our head? What are we letting it saturate and, and be filled with? Let it be purity of heart, of soul, of mind. The Lord wants us to be a people pure. Building according to the pattern. And he's shaping us. He's shaping us day by day. He's getting out, as it were, the, the, uh, the, the scissors of the Holy Spirit. And he's, I trust that he's forming Christ in you. That, that somehow, eventually, a pattern will emerge. A pattern will emerge. Imagine if we had a church where all copied Christ. He was our template, if you like. That Christ was our template so much that in every one of our lives, one by one, there would be this wonderful picture of Christ, his body. The template who is Christ. That person who is Christ in every one of us. Not that we're going to be clones of one another. There's different shapes and sizes and colours and backgrounds. Different gifts and callings and qualities and abilities. But they're Christ-likeness. There's Christ-likeness there. There's a Christ-like character as we're growing up into the stature of the fullness of the measure of Christ. He is our template. He is our template. And brothers and sisters, let's be challenged to think, how can I have that kind of pattern in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works? In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity and sincerity. Sound speaks that cannot be condemned. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That we all might aspire to that pattern that is Christ our Lord. That we might all aspire to be more like him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to 
Make us more like Christ. Help us to see in Christ everything that we can be, everything we should aspire to be, that others who watch our lives will see Christ in us. That they'll see less of us and more of you. That as we decrease, you will increase. Lord, that that example that we set will not be a wrong example, but a right example, an example that others should aspire to follow. Lord, help us when we fail, when we don't set the right example. Help us, Lord, to repent where we have fallen astray. Help us to be more like you, Lord Jesus, that you would help us by your Spirit to be those kind of people, that we might be a, a church filled with people who are examples, people who are patterning their lives after Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.